Hi, I'm Dom Kirby. Today we're going to show you how Microsoft Teams can enable your clients to work from home while still remaining collaborative. Here we're inside Megan's Windows 10 device at Contoso. Megan's used to using Outlook to communicate inside and outside the organization day to day. However, in response to a need to work from home, we've deployed Teams for Contoso. Megan has the Teams app open, and in this screen she can communicate with Alex using a direct message. Alex will get notified immediately that he's received a new message. Depending on the nature of the discussion, they may choose to start a call by clicking here, start a video conference by clicking here, or even share screens and collaborate live on the Contoso NextGen document they're working on. You can see that Megan has multiple chats going and can even start a group chat as she desires by adding someone to the existing chat. Here we'll add Alex to talk with Isaiah and Megan about the project. When Megan has finished communicating in private messages, she can move to the heart of Teams, which is the Teams section here on the left. Teams are broken up into critical sections that you'll need to know. Here we have a team. This team is called Contoso, and as you can see over here in the top right, it's called an org-wide team. This means that everyone in the company is automatically a member of this team. From here, I can start a conversation that everyone in the company will be able to see, and anyone in the company will be able to reply to. I can also take advantage of some of the more fun features of Teams, and we can share GIFs with each other. It's a great way to keep your culture alive. In addition to the org-wide team, Megan's also a member of some other teams that she's chosen to hide. You can see here that she's a member of the Mark 8 project, where we're discussing vital information prior to this product release. Megan also has a document open related to the design of the Mark 8 project. To access these files, she goes to the Files tab. You can see that there are several different files here that are all Office files. From here, she can click, choose Open, and choose Open in Word. When she does this, the full featured Word client will open with the document she was working on. As you can see in the top left, her changes are automatically saved right back to SharePoint or even a third-party file sharing system. As she works on the document, her coworkers will also be able to log in and work on the document at the same time as her. When she's done, she simply closes Word as it's automatically saved. The next key component of working inside a team is group meetings. As you can see here, there are several different options under the Message Compose box. Using this camera icon, Megan can start a meeting with everyone that has access to this channel. Once Megan has started the meeting, anyone who's running late can click right here to join right in and start collaborating. In addition, meetings can also be recorded and will be saved right back to the channel for future reference. Recording meetings is a great way to capture all the information you need when working remotely. This allows anyone who had to miss the meeting to catch themselves up. Other key features of Teams include the ability to format a message. In this example, I've hit the A down here to open the message formatting pane. Instead of a conversation, I'm going to make an announcement. I'm going to give the announcement a title, and I'm going to throw some content in there. We're going to say, working from home habits will be shared by HR. I have a few different options that also help make sure that my announcements get seen by the people who need to see them. For example, I can hit the three dots over here and mark this as important. This will notify everyone on the team that something important has been posted in here. In the case of an announcement, I can also block replies to make sure that it doesn't get messy. If I'm looking for a team that I'm not currently a member of, I'll look for this button down here that says join or create a team. Depending on your organization settings, you may not be able to create a team. Any public teams will be displayed here for you to join. In this case, Contoso doesn't have any available public teams that I'm not a member of. In other circumstances, a team owner may share a join code with you that you can enter here and click join team to automatically join the team. The next key component of teams that will help you work remotely is meetings. We all have a lot of meetings and we need to continue having them even if we're working remote. Megan can click the calendar button in teams to see her calendar just as it exists in Outlook. 
As you can see here, if we go to her Outlook calendar, everything there is the same. From here, I can see if any of my meetings are online meetings. Right now, it doesn't look like Megan has any meetings, so I'll go ahead and schedule one by hitting the New Meeting button here. Similar to an Outlook meeting, I'll need to give it a title, add some attendees, let's invite Isaiah. I'm going to need to give it a date and time, we'll leave this as an evening meeting for now. We can still specify repetition, we can tag this meeting to a channel, which means that everyone in the channel will automatically be able to join the meeting. And I can type some details about what we're going to talk about. From there, I can hit send. Isaiah is going to receive an Outlook calendar invite just like he always has. The difference is, is that when either Megan, Isaiah, or any other meeting member look at their calendar in Teams, they can click on this meeting and they're presented with a big purple join button. Once they hit this join button, they'll be joined to the online meeting where they'll be able to share screens, cameras, chat live, and have a text chat. In addition, there are features that can be added by your administrator to include whiteboarding, third-party apps, and integrations with other meeting platforms if needed. Once Megan has finished up her meeting, she can go to the activities section in Teams to get caught up. Think of the activity like your social media feed. It's going to condense information across all of Teams and everything you're tied to and put it in one spot. For example, you can see Adele replied to one of Megan's earlier messages in the Sales and Marketing team and the Monthly Reports channel. You can also see Pradeep reacted to some of her messages, and several other things have happened since she's been away, such as app mentions that she should probably check on. The Activity section is a great way to check the pulse of your team when you've been away for a while. Similar to in the office, we like to joke around and have fun with each other. Teams enables that capability through a number of online communication methods. It's important to maintain your culture when you're working remotely and not seeing each other quite as much. As you can see down here in this toolbar, there are several different options to include stickers, a huge library of GIFs, and emoji. These tools provide important ways to share what you're really thinking and to have fun while communicating with each other. For example, we'll put in a fun GIF and share it just like that. Unlike when you're communicating face-to-face, -face, when you're communicating online, your coworkers can't see how you're reacting to things. That's why GIFs, emojis, and other fun tools become a great way to communicate with each other when you don't see each other. Mm -hmm.